Well, let's, um, let's pray again. I'll probably pray more than once. Yes. <laughs> so, Father, we say thank you for our time together this morning. We ask for your presence, Holy Spirit, that you would come, that you would be with each one of us and help us to focus on what it is that you're saying and doing in this time and space and within our hearts. And Father, I ask that you would anoint any of my words that are from you for every hearer. And anything that's not from you would just drop to the ground. We say thank you. In Jesus' name. Uh, so a joke? All right. They're really dumb. Okay, so 70% of the earth is water. And uh, virtually none of it is carbonated. <laughs> so the earth is, in fact, flat. <laughs> My first job was at an orange juice factory. Sadly, I got canned. I couldn't concentrate. All right. What do you call a can opener that doesn't work? A can't opener. <laughs> I see some people still trying to figure that one out. Oh, brother. <laughs> I think that might be the last one. Oh, no, no, no. I was walking through the jungle, and I saw a lizard standing on his hind legs telling jokes. I turned to a local tribesman, and I said, that lizard is really funny. The tribesman replied, that's not a lizard. He's a stand-up chameleon. <laughs> Poor Nozomu and Kamiko. <laughs> uh, all right. So Miku already read the anchor verse for the message. <laughs> Philippians 3... Uh, let me look it up. 3.14. And I'm going to read it. I'm going to start in 13. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. I press forward, forgetting those things which are behind. And if uh, not everybody is aware in here probably, but um, most of you would know or remember that Charlie and I made the transition to Miko and Alyssa handing over senior leadership of the church to them in January. And transition is hard. And much of the difficulty for me personally has been letting go and not looking back. I have this assumption of what things are going to look like in the future um, and it's, you know, that's my, that's my picture maybe. I, I didn't really know, so what things am I letting go of? I'm still going to have the same identity, right? I'm still going to have the same jobs, right? I just won't have the same title. But the Lord is taking us through transition, all of us. My transition looks different than yours. So, Father, right now I just pray for your presence to come. And I bind any distractions in Jesus' name from keeping us from hearing your message, keeping me from being able to stay on track. Um, I bind any spirit of condemnation ahead of time that the words that you have for me to speak would not find a place where the enemy would want to take things and root them in condemnation, but, Father, only for conviction and for encouragement the words that I would speak this morning come from your heart to your people. In Jesus' name. Okay. 
So first of all, I want to say that this message is not aimed at any one single person. I didn't have any person in my mind as I was going, oh, this person really needs to hear this message. If anything, it's to me. So can you just take yourself off of that place where it might be you? She might be talking about me. No, just let that go right now. But this season for me has been forgetting or letting go of what's behind. And for some of us, that may uh, be your personal history and what walking with the Spirit looks like. Some of you, that might be your past relationships and things that you haven't been able to let go of about that person or that group of people or that other church that I used to go to. Um, some of you, that could be um, disappointment. Anybody been disappointed? Yeah? Okay. So we're forgetting what is behind, according to that verse in Philippians 3.14, and we're pressing on to grasp a hold of what it is that he has for us ahead. We're pressing on, and then the final section of the message is going to be faith by activation. So yesterday I was driving in my car. I had a passenger in the back seat, and Sadly, it was a very long ride. And this poor woman, I mean, it was tragic what she was sharing with me. But you could tell that she was living in the testimony of what had been happening in her life. So she said with this, I, I'll just give you a very short summary, that she had a boyfriend that she had been living with and... Um, and he was lazy, and she was paying all the rent, and he was only giving her this much money to share the rent, and he wouldn't do anything, and he was going through her stuff and stealing her jewelry. And I mean, it was just, and, and so I'd go, I went driving by New Song, and I said, you know, if you're looking for community, because we'd already had that part of the conversation, she really needs to find a place of community. That's a good place to start. And she acknowledged, oh, yes, I really need Jesus in my life, because my boyfriend... <laughs> She couldn't get past what had been happening. And the fact that she's let him go and she's sending him on his way, but she was not going to be able to send him on his way when he was still living in her head, still living in her heart. So I just want to ask you personally, Um, as Charlie and I are going through this transition, as Miko and Alyssa are going through this transition, as you all are going through this transition, as you all are going through your own personal transitions, what is it that you're supposed to be letting go of? We're actually going to just take a moment in prayer. I'm going to ask the Lord if there's something personally that you're supposed to be asking the Lord. Ask the Lord, what is it I'm supposed to be letting go of? Oh, Father, we thank you so much for your grace and your mercy. And we trust you above all others. And we ask you to help us to let go of those things that are just taking up space that belongs to you in our hearts and in our minds, in our future, with you. Thank you. Does anybody want to share? You don't have to. No. Did anybody get something? Yeah, yeah. I think the biggest thing for me going through the transition that we're all aware of now was identity. My identity was the senior leader of Abiding Place. And now I'm just a pastor. But in him there is no just, 
And letting go of being the senior leader allows me to press on to what it is that he's calling me into. And if I let that identity stay there, then I'd never be able to step into whatever it is that he's calling me to. These are some of the things that I came up with about the past. If you can't forget the sins of the past of your own self or others, rehearsing your wounds, your shortcomings, your bitterness toward others that have hurt you, if you can't leave behind the glories of the past and throw your crown down at the feet of Jesus, like it says in Revelation 4.10, and by the way, if it's good enough for the 24 elders, it's good enough for me to throw my crown down at the feet of Jesus. then there isn't enough room within us to receive the new, whatever that may be. The new marching orders, a new title, a new direction, a new home, a new family. Now, Before I go any farther, I just want to say I am so proud of all of you. You did a good job. You're doing a great job. Thank you for making space for Alyssa and Miko in your hearts. Thank you for honoring the transition and what the Lord said by staying here. Thank you for not letting go of the things that the Lord has called you into, but pushing ahead anyway, even though the terrain looks different. Thank you for letting them say things that are going to be different from what we did in the past and going, okay, okay, I can, I can let go. I can let I. I know I can let go. That's me. I'm saying that. <laughs> I can let go. But I'm just very, I'm so proud of you. I'm proud of me too, but I'm proud of you. Oh. So the funny thing about pressing on is when you go through times of change and transition where there's change happening around you, there's change happening to you and you don't know exactly what you're supposed to do. How do you press on when you haven't heard? Does anybody have an answer for that? You wait with expectation. Sometimes you just keep moving in the same direction and you don't move to the right or to the left. You're waiting for the Lord to give you that word where he says, this is the way, go in it. Okay, stupid question. How are you going to hear a new direction? Part of Robin's thing about you wait is you're waiting with expectancy and you are listening. You can't be listening if you're not spending time with the Lord, right? Uh, I want to, I'm really, I'm totally out of the flow of what I have typed up here. I have no idea where I am, but I want to go to, um, hmm. oh, Hebrews 12, 1 through 2. Let's go to Hebrews. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, all of us are a wonderful cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Oh, the wonderful cross. And then in my Women of Destiny Bible, there's a little devotional. And I wanted to read a part of this devotional. And if you're a man, you can ignore what I say. <laughs> I hear myself issuing a challenge. Run after God. Seek his face. Pray more. Increase your devotions. Turn down the radio, enjoy the quiet. But this ultimatum isn't 
for the ladies in my church or even my Bible study group. It's for me, my walk and my life. Being a woman, and I'm just going to add in there being a man as well, I have always... I always have a running list of things to do, goals set, tasks waiting to be accomplished. Anybody carry a list on their phone? Something of, yeah, all the stuff that you're supposed to do. How many of you have to go by that during the day and go, okay, did I get that done? Did I get the other done? Anybody? Just me? Oh, okay, good. Um, and then just when I have checked off a few, I realize that I've added more to the list. Oh, I do that every day. It's a never-ending list. Thank God that his mercies are never-ending as well. Grace for the day. But I still hear this small voice. Hi, Travis. Hi, Tati. Welcome. <laughs> so good to see you. But I still hear this small voice, and her name is Cece. Come away. Come spend some time with me. Let's enjoy each other's company. And then it's my choice. Come away or... Dig deeper into the bottomless list of to-dos. Um, which one is easier for you? The list is easier. And sometimes the list is more rewarding, isn't it? Because you get to check it off when it's done. Spending time with Jesus, sometimes all you do is sit and cry, and you go, what just happened here? Anything? Anything? Is there any change? Did I get any direction? No, I just poured my complaint out before the Lord. And I'm going to read in just a little bit what he had to say to me this morning. Um, and then the end of this devotional said, Join me. Let's run the race together, laying aside every weight, including the lists of things waiting to be done and the things that keep us from him. Let's fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Let's come away and run hard after him. In doing so, we will run stri straight into the Father's arms. So we press in to his presence. Even when we don't know what it is that he's doing or what it is that he's saying, we still sit at his feet and we just wait on him. And sometimes we can ask him for a word and he'll give us a word and the word is totally different than what we were asking for. Right? Okay. I'll just grab a hold of that and, and I'll trust you, God. But sometimes you get a word that you're supposed to actually step out on. Uh, in Hebrews, again, it's the chapter 11 that talks about faith. In Hebrews 11.8, it says, By faith Abraham. And then it goes through the things that Abraham did by faith. That's good. More, Cheryl. Yep. Okay. By faith Abraham. He was given marching orders by... And all he knew was that he was supposed to leave and go in the direction that God would tell him. Sometimes that's all you get. Again, don't let yourself get distracted by turning to the left or turning to the right. God said go, you step out on it. What about the boat that Peter stepped out on? What did he step out onto? He stepped out onto a word, come, come. He got a word and he stepped out. Have any of you gotten a word? Yeah? So what happens if you sit down and you go, okay, God, give me a word. Okay, I'm waiting. Isn't there a part that we have to play? Yeah, not always, usually. So I got a word last week. Was it last week? Was it last Sunday? No, it was the Sunday before. Jeff? Jeff? Sunday before, two weeks ago, got a word. Jeff said, you're getting a raise. And as he left the building, he almost, I think he was almost out the door, and he came, turned around and came back. He said, you're getting a raise. I got that word twice from the same person, but I got it twice. God really wanted me to know he's giving me a raise. 
I didn't know what that would look like. My job is here, and my job is driving. How do you get a raise when you're driving? I can expect tips. I can expect the possibility of more rides. If I never get in my car, am I going to get that raise? No, I have to get out there and drive. So when I drive, I don't know about Charlie, but for me it can get disheartening or discouraging when it's slow in the mornings. There are those days where, oh, this isn't working, I'm in the wrong spot, I'm getting these really tiny rides, nobody's tipping, I'm lucky if I make $16 hour, dollars an hour, this isn't worth it, I'm just going to be done for the day. Go home, all done. But if I choose to stay out there and drive on the word, you're getting a raise, then sometimes there's a place of pressing past that point of resistance. Where I normally would go home, I choose to, I'm just going to stay out here. I'm just going to keep driving. I'm going to, I'm going to look for, wait for that ride to come. Maybe I'll go and drive in a place that I might not be as comfortable driving, but I know that there are probably more rides. And I actually increased my earnings by 25% every week. Yeah. I got a raise. If I had, I know, yay. If I had stayed within my comfort zone and not put myself out there and not gone into those places or let the little bit of resistance keep me from driving anymore, I wouldn't have gotten that raise. I wouldn't have received the reward. Now, that's, I, that's a monetary thing, but it was also a faith thing. And faith without works doesn't do anything. I'm sorry. I mean, you can, yes, there is the waiting, but when you get your marching orders, if he gives you a word, you've got to put yourself out there. Gloria got a word. You got a word, seek intimacy. Has anybody watched that woman seek intimacy? Yeah. Has God shown up? Yeah. He did this morning. That's good. Would God show up if you never pressed into the word? No. Anybody else have a faith word? God's given you a word. Jeff, what was your word? Knock on the doors. That's right. Yes. Love everyone. Boy, that's a high calling. Wow. And if you stayed in your home on your bed, what well, would that, you wouldn't see any activation on that word, would you? Um. Nobody else has a word, faith word. Wow. Maybe you should be seeking God for a faith word. Yes, Eunice. Keep reaching out to the ladies. Yep. Good. Yeah. Yes, Marilyn. Wow. And was that a faith word that the Lord gave you? Yes. He told you to press into your relationships with your family? Yes. Yeah. And I've seen that. I've seen you doing that. Anybody else? Yes. Robin. I didn't get the first part, but I think that that was about, he's told you, bring you back here to open the heavens with worship. And if Robin never worshipped, <laughs> but 
as she worships, the Lord is honoring that his word and giving her more opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Father, we just want to thank you for the words that you give us. The words to anchor our lives on. And the words to give us the encouragement to press on. And I even ask you to uh, remind us right now. I'm not asking just for a new word, but I'm asking you to remind us of the words that you've given that we haven't seen answers to yet. Remind us of those words. Even now in this place, remind us in Jesus' name of the words that you've given us. And walk with us as we choose to step into those words. Show us how we can step into them in Jesus' name. <sighs> Yuda also... I have seen Yuda. I don't know. I don't know what the word was that you got, but Yuda shows up in prayer on the Precious Daughter streaming every Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Is that right? No. Wednesday and Thursday, and she is there. She's there praying with the ladies. Um, and I, I really think that it's good for us to encourage one another in even seeing what it is that the Lord is. Donna, I don't know what your word is, but I've seen you show up at the food pantry and this woman comes alive. She gets to connect with the people of the neighborhood. She greets them by name. If she doesn't remember their name, then she's asking for their name. She's asking about their lives. Yeah. Oh, was that a word that you got? Did you get a word of... Acknowledging people by name is powerful. That's good. Yeah. Come on, I'm going to call you out. Anybody else have a word of faith? Yes, Megan. Your son is coming back. Okay. Woo! Okay. And so you have to step out in the part that you have to play in that, right? Yeah. If you stayed at home and waited for him to come home, would it happen? No. Anybody else? More Holy Spirit-empowered Spirit encounters. Individually and with others. And are you seeing it? Yeah? Cheryl? Wow. Okay, so the word was offer to they need prayer, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the, the word is to pr offer to pray for anybody that the Spirit lays on your heart to stop the car and ho, ho, ho. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah yeah offer them a cookie offer prayer like you were offering them a free cookie yeah I love that yeah and I love the testimonies are, are, is your faith getting encouraged right now and listening to other people and the, their faith words and, and stepping out on those faith words. Camille, what is your faith word? My faith yes. <laughs> your cupboards will never run dry. Wow. Wow, okay. Is there a part that you have to play in that? Like an activation? I mean, I think part of it is faithfulness and faith. Oh. 
Yes. That's great. Yeah. So trusting the Lord, continuing to give. Yeah. Um, I, I feel my, my faith being encouraged. I do. Um, I, I had a dream a long time ago. And in this dream, I was, I was being sent in as a secret weapon. I had a backpack on my back. And I knew that in my backpack there was a secret weapon. And I was sent into a Japanese concentration camp. And far off away, I could see a Native American concentration camp across a bridge, across a river. But I knew my job was to go to the Japanese concentration camp. And when I went into this camp, um, I would go into the bathroom, and there was this list of things that I could do or I couldn't do, like the rules for how to engage with that culture. There was a particular way I was supposed to wash my hands, a particular way I was supposed to dry my hands. And, I, and another person came and spoke with me about it, make sure that they, um, well, I don't need to talk about that part. But then lo and behold, this was before meeting Nozomu and Kumiko. And we get to go to Japan and minister at churches in Japan. I get to go as a secret weapon. I never would have done that. Uh, I wouldn't have been able to step into that if I had never said yes to going, uh, yes to flying over to another country, yes to being, <laughs> yes to uh, going to an airport and flying separately from my husband, navigating all these different airports. I never, if you would have told me years ago I would have done that, I would have said, no, I'm not. And um, the last time that we came back home, we tried to put me on the same flight as Charlie, and they were so apologetic. They said, oh, I'm so sorry, we can't do that, but we'll give you an upgrade. So Charlie got upgraded to first class, and I waited for four hours in the airport for my flight. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Huh. <laughs> okay, well, I want to see if there's something. I talked about the no good boyfriend, right? Yep. I talked about the word of faith. I feel like there is one more section. Mm hmm. Um, I just want to share that. One of the things that the Lord keeps sharing with me over and over and over again. I mean, I, I will journal when I have the time or I take the time to sit down with him and just listen and ask him if he has a word. And I'll write something down and I'll read back through it and there's always something that says, keep your eyes on me. Always. Keep your eyes on me. Keep your eyes locked on me. Um, and so I want to read just what I heard this morning. And maybe, uh, well, I give you free permission to take this word and grab it for yourself. So put yourself in the language if you, if you are comfortable doing that. My daughter, only you can press into me for yourself. No one else can do it for you. And no one else can take your place in my heart. There is no one else like you for me. There is no one else that brings delight to my heart like you can. So would you come? I have treasures for you in your waiting on me. Treasures of goodness, treasures of wisdom, treasures of strength. Press in, press in, press in. I am not hard to find. I am just a breath away. Just think about me and I am there. <laughs> sure. My daughter, only you can press into me for yourself. No one else can do it for you, and no one else can take your place in my heart. There is no one else like you for me. There is no one else that brings delight to my heart like you can. So would you come? 
I have treasures for you and you're waiting on me, treasures of goodness, treasures of wisdom, treasures of strength. Press in, press in, press in. I am not hard to find. I am just a breath away. Just think about me and I am there. So it takes for me when I have that spare time, not grabbing my phone not playing solitaire or looking through Facebook, but choosing to lay it aside. That's my pressing in. It helps when he says things like, there's nobody else that can take your place in my heart. That's pretty amazing. And that's for you too. Nobody else that can take your place in his heart. Nobody else that can fill the spot that only you can fill in his heart. And he has treasures for each one of us. But if we never choose to even activate that part of our faith walk by choosing to trust that he's going to meet us when we turn to him, then we'll never get it. It's personal. You can't do that through your pastor. You can't get there by just listening to worship music but never letting your heart get engaged. So, Father, we just say thank you for your love for each one of us. You mind if I sit down? There is no higher, better thing than to know that we have a relationship with you and that it's personal and that you want each one of us to press into your presence that you have gifts for us and it's not a good kid or a bad kid you're a good kid if you do and a bad kid if you don't but it's that you have so much to give and so we ask you to walk with us as we choose to press into your presence, as we choose to lay aside our lists of to-dos, as we choose to lay aside the distractions that get in the way. I know, Father, that we all have busy lives. You know that we all have busy lives. But our desire is to honor the relationship that we have with you, and we are so thankful for it. And Father, if we try to step it out on our faith words without your presence in our life, we're just going to mess it up. So we ask for your presence to go with us. We ask for the voice that is behind us saying, this is the way, go in it, to give us the encouragement that we need to press into the things you've called us to press into and to strengthen ourselves in your presence by just waiting on you to give us the the strength we need for the next day and the next day. We love you. We love you, Father. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. We say thank you. 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 There's no one like you. There's no one like you. There's no one like you. There's no one that would give up what you gave up for us. Jesus, you would have climbed up on that Christ. Nobody had to put you there for us because you loved us and you loved Father. So we say thank you. We ask for your anointing on the rest of our day. Anoint any words that were from you. Help us to remember them and encourage our hearts today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.